Yo, what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to my corner of the world. Today we're here for a CJ the Champ reaction. He's got a new one, Afro the Coldest Samurai. Uh, I, I believe this is a show I have not watched before. I have seen it, like, growing up, like, different, like, trailers and commercials and stuff, but, like, I never, like, actually watched it, so I know nothing about it. This is gonna be, like, completely blind, and I'm excited, so let's just hop in. So why they fighting the bad shawties out here watching from a distance? So she calls up DJ Noodle Barnacle and tells him, Hey, yo. my shit, baby. So bro pulls out his mixtape and said, I'm about to go platinum with this. And they end up getting jumped by the damn Foot Clan. Sounds interesting. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to return once again to the round table of Black Air Force activity. A okay. series that we observe and analyze 2D niggas going to beat the shit out of other 2D niggas for our joy and entertainment. Mm -hmm. And ladies and gentlemen, without wasting time, I'm just go ahead and tell you. Today, we is going over one of the coldest niggas to ever grace a manga panel in animation itself. And not to mention the niggas res is unspoken. Sin. But yeah. ladies and gentlemen, the coldest samurai to ever do it, this nigga Afro. I mean, come on, y'all. This man was so cold. They had to get Samuel L. Jackson to voice this nigga. <laughs> I mean, oh really? What more evidence do you need? I mean, oh yeah, that's enough right there. Shit, but uh, y'all already know we got the evidence on deck. So uh, strap in, get some popcorn. Samuel and, uh, Jackson himself voiced him. <laughs> Exhibit A. That's enough yeah, to be right, put on the table. And gentlemen. Now to understand how this man became the coldest nigga to ever walk the earth, we gotta go back to the past. Now, as we can see, Afro is a. Little ugly ass Jin, I ain't even gonna lie to you. You cannot tell me that bro is not built like the black ass NPCs from Sonic Unleashed. Stop. Hey, big ass bobblehead. This nigga is a Funko Pop. And then look at this man, dad. This man looking cold as a mug. So Afro's dad has the number one headband. And you see, the number one headband in this world basically means you is the coldest man to walk the earth. You is him. <laughs> but there comes some baggage with it. Because of course. everybody's your op. Everybody wants the goddamn headband. But you have to have the number two headband to challenge the number one so afro's dad is about to face off against the number two headband now you see the holder of the number two headband is this man named justice but to be honest with ourselves this is literally freddy krueger <laughs> Bro decided to make a guest appearance. So this man Freddy wasted no time. Bro pulled out the two revolvers and started blasting. But that man Afro's dad was the coldest Wait. man on the earth for a reason. He started blitzing. Hey, yo. And this man on his heels kept going back to Elm Street. So as he has Bro right where he wants him, he goes in for the kill shot. But unfortunately, Freddy had tricks up his sleeves. He decapitates this nigga right in front of his son. Bro, what? Fatality. And then this man picks How do you do that? Head, takes off the number one headband and throws it at this little nigga. He said, here's your nappy headed ass daddy head, boy. So that's, then he walks up to Aaron, that's this cold, traumatized man. kid that just saw his dad's head get cut off. And he says, ooh, it's unfortunate you had to see that little nigga. Ah, but it's all good though. Cause guess what? Fair to work. We packing the edge, guess what? It'll be a laugh right now if you nigga. It's a pack watch on Elm Street, nigga. The fact that he literally pulled out a pack is crazy. He actually pulled out a pack and started smoking that. That is like peak level disrespect, bro. Oh Afro my god. Afro just witnessed Freddy Krueger put his dad in a pack and smoke it right in front of his That's face. That's crazy. His quest for revenge began. Now, I ain't gonna lie, the man went through some tough times. Bro got jumped by some bandits while they was playing with his dad's skull. Bro, Bro said, what? And sends him flying and leaves oh him. Oh my alone. god. But he ends up getting found by Gino in Otsudu. And he ends up getting raised in a sword fighting orphanage and trained in sword fighting under his master, who is going to be very important later on. So one day, oh. Afro's out with Gino in Otsudu selling some fruit. And he ends up overhearing these dudes talking about, hey, so is number two really back in town? Yeah, man, apparently he's back from smoking all the ops. So this man Afro overheard this, and he decided, hmm, 
I'm gonna go jump this nigga. So later on, not a smart move. Bro, beating some cheeks in the room. Hey yo, what the fuck? It runs up on him like, wait, number two, nigga. And bro's like, hey bro, chill. You see me busy up in here, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Fuck all that. Her booty stank anyways. Where's the number two, nigga? But bro tried to pull out the strap, but Afro slits his throat, makes his shorty pass out. He just straight up murders, bro. Bro, cock blocked the dude and killed him. But the dude wasn't dead yet and basically gave him the Thanos speech. You should have gone for the head and murks himself. So later on, bro's crew ends up pulling up. Why bother telling him we should have gone for the head Because they trying to slide back for their nigga. So they pull up on Afro and straight up surround them. They are really about to jump a little kid. They said we sliding for background character 384. So Afro <laughs> said, I then bet. So he started drinking his lemonade. Who the lemonade at, bro? And used it as a distraction to take his sword and decapitate, bro. Spread his hot ass breath in this dude's eyes. Cut off dude's arm. Makes this guy kill his own teammate. Slices this grown ass man in half. But then Gollum comes behind him and grabs him and starts saying, My precious. But Back up, creep. Him, bro misfires and gets a betrayal. But then this ugly bum right here ends up whacking him. This Pirates of the Caribbean region. Looking muff, cause they both start stepping on him and saying, Yeah, we slotted for our nigga Reg, cuh. But one of the kids ends up throwing a spear at him and cutting off his ear. This nigga's Mike Tyson. Then Yo. Afro jumps up and shoves this blade in Bro's neck. But then Afro started saying, Where's number two? I'm gonna kill that nigga. But then Bro told him, The number two is dead, and somebody done already killed him. So this is where we're going to end our first flashback sequence because this is just aye, the first aye, one. Aye. Everything will make sense later. So now we go to the present. Now, as we can see, Afro is the holder of the number two headband and he is about to get jumped. So this mm. bandit walk up and he like, well, 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 looks like this is the end of the road for you, Afro Samurai. <laughs> now, me and my boys about to yank that headband off of that nappy ass head of yours. You nappy headed motherfucker. But this man, Afro, was not phased. <laughs> Yo, his voice his actor is top here. Hose. So they all start running at this man like some hungry ass hyenas. So Bro shoots this musket, but Afro cuts the bullet in half. And it nice. Ends up spreading and killing everybody. Bruh. And look at all oh these my God. bastards just running to their death. This was a damn massacre. Not even. I am deserting. Okay? The moment he slices that bullet in, I don't even know how many pieces because it like, it it just went through like how many people was that like five or six behind him? But Afro cuts the bullet in half and it ends up spreading and killing everybody. All those guys right there. As soon as I see that, I am gone. Like, that was just one bullet, bro. Just one. Like, could you imagine what else this dude is capable of? No, I'm I'm gone. I and am gone. Ugly bastards just running to they Stupid. Death. This was a damn massacre. Not even a fight. I don't even think bro broke a sweat. Look at this dodge. It he... went through the nigga's hair. Oh, this my God. disgusting. An absolute bloodbath. Bro sent all these NPCs back to the fire logs. So As he should, because they were stupid enough to like, stay. Why? Why you had to do this to us, nigga? The fuck we do to deserve this, car? And you want to know what Afro's response was? You stepped Bro up. Just casually smoked their pack. <laughs> yeah. Bro said, rip, bum ass nigga. Then after that, he went to his imaginary friend, Ninja Ninja. And Bro imaginary said, friend? That shit, nigga. And look at his monstrous inhale. Bro said, <laughs> God. Damn! Bruh. So after that massacre, word starts spreading out that Afro's back in town. Everybody in this bar is shook. They like, boy, ain't no way in hell that nigga real. And I know everybody in this bar gotta be high as fuck. It is smoky as yeah, shit. Yeah, I was about to say, look at all that straight, smoke. Miles, gas in a two pack of ass. So this Smoke ass me in there. In here and all these sketchy ass muff because of shook. So he walk up to the fine ass bartender. I ain't gonna lie. So she like, hey, how you doing, baby? What you feeling today? Penny, Patron, Crown, Bacardi? I could make a mean ass mojito, nigga. So you think Afro would get a mean ass drink, like just straight Hennessy straight out the bottle. You know what bro said? Lemonade, ice, cold. I feel it. What? 
Embarrassing. <laughs> well, everybody like, hey, what the fuck, old oh, soft ass nigga? Look at this big black nigga looking like. Why he choosing not to drink? What's wrong with that? Lemonade. And he's like, yo, nigga, you must drink a man's drink, huh? But Afro lifted up his hand and Shotty was like, another one on his tab. So then Big uh -huh. Bro tried to swing at him, but Afro backhands Bro and sends him in the spin cycle. As he Look should. His unspoken Riz. She was like, God damn. So Afro pulls out this crazy ass Yeah, this music. Strong, and she was like, damn, you cold as hell. <laughs> and Bro took a mean ass sip and said, God damn. And after that, it was wrapped. <laughs> the bartender was ready to give up the boom boom. So after oh. Afro left the bar, okay, some dude from the bar followed him, and he ends up pulling out this big ass crossbow and just started shooting. Bro came ready to hit him. There's no so way. Arrows blocking all the arrows. Bro got desperate, so he pulled out the new tool. Bro said, "I'm getting that headband at any means cost." But Afro came down and hey, like, "Hey yo, bro what is this weapon combination?" Bro said, "Night, night, motherfucker." But after he watched this idiot. Is where stuff got crazy. This big ass nigga comes from the top of the cliff, pulls out a fucking RPG, and bro shot that thing, and Afro got blown off a cliff. On that site? Brother is oh, slumped. Oh, oh, for what? So what, what, what did he do? Blown off a cliff. He ends up getting found and taken care of by this. Oh my god. Just. Yacht of a, I, I, I guess when you're just a number two coldest nigga in the world, you usually get all the bad bitches, don't you? But Shawty was guess. so bad, she even had this man Afro mesmerized. He ended up yeah. seeing her butt booty naked. She looked at him like, hey. And Bro just looked at her and said, yacht. But little did Afro know, Shawty was two timing him the whole time. Of she course. was working with the goddamn Peanut Head Collective, the ones that shot the him off the cliff. So she asked him to stay. She like, hey, um, so can you uh watch these fireworks with me? So they went outside, started watching these fireworks, and she just got freaky as shit. She started rubbing up on this man's arms, started kissing him. So obviously. That man Afro was like, oh, I'm busting the shit out of this <laughs> Yes, sir. Then, uh, you know what happened next. That's not what happened, music, nigga. Oh, it did? These are my hands, YouTube. Well, These I am my hands. that <laughs> As you can see, I'm just clapping to congratulate a young nigga for getting some ass. Oh my god, it is really so unfortunate that he actually has to say that for the guidelines. <laughs> Oh my god, stay getting uh, monetized, bro. To congratulate a young nigga for getting some ass. <laughs> he shows his face. Oh my god. Destruction. Shawty said, God, but they actually went there, though. I was she shocked. She betraying the League of Peanut Heads. Because she was like, nah, I can't do this. The BBC too good. But actually, the reason was, this is actually his childhood friend, Otsudu, the whole time. The one oh. that straight up found him when he was left for dead. And she said she wanted to watch the fireworks with him before she died. So while they having this sentimental last conversation, they end up getting ran up on by the ops. So Afro's telling this shawty, you need to get the stepping button. <laughs> In the peanut head on top. Oh my god. Bitch letting the BBC hypnotize you and bro. shit. And then they just straight up burnt the house down, bro. And this man, Afro, was hurt. But this done made the man even more revenge driven. Bro was like, first my dad, now my shawty. Nah, this nigga, man about to turn into John Wick. Like, like, what are y'all doing? Start talking, saying, hey, my brother, I mean, at least you got the hit. Now keep the shit that she gave you and pick out that nappy ass head, boy. Stop. So Afro goes up and runs up on the Empty Seven Clan, or basically what I've been calling them the whole time, the League of Peanut Heads or the Peanut Head Collective. I mean, they basically the League of Shadows with Peanut Heads. But anyways, <laughs> they ended up making a robot clone of this man. Look at this boy hey, his face this doppelganger. Bro doing the same thing that he doing. So Afro started getting into it with the Afro bot. But I ain't gonna lie, Afro was getting whooped. And then the Peanut Heads on top like, yes, my brother. Us. Witness that nappy headed ass nigga get his ass whooped. But that man Afro had to lock in. So that man had to unlock the early instinct. instinct. But we ain't know what the hell to call this back in 2007. So he unlocked the power of Bob and Weave. <laughs> then he just slices bro right down the middle. Made light work of that phony ass AI. So later on, while he's basically raiding their palace, he ends up running up on this one peanut head. And bro is just sitting there with some damn headphones on his head. I don't know what bro listening to, but it sounds like he listened to some party leaks. Bro saying, 
She suck on my dick. What? I put out her back. What? Look at the floor. Yeah. Look that BBC. What? Hey, Girl yo, just CJ. Tea, then just starts bowing down saying, please just let me listen to my Cardi leaks in peace. So after Afro passed him, he hey, I feel it though. They're just supposed to chill and listen to music. Him off the cliff. But Afro made short work of this bozo. Bro came from the roof and said, This is for my shorty. But then dude spawned more peanut heads from his backpack. This nigga is cell, bro. Just pooped out the cell <laughs> juniors. So they straight up surround him. So this one run at him. But Afro shoves the sheath of the sword in his chest. And Not he just even an actual him at the sword. Other dude. That's and bro's just like, Oh shit. Get off me, brother five! But Afro just picks up this sword and just makes a peanut kebab. Bruh. So about five minutes later, he walks into this next room. And Blood right here think he playing Splinter Cell. Bro thinks he's camouflaged in the bodies with his night vision. But this man probably had the most brutal death in this entire show. So he trying to sneak him. But then he looking in the thing. He like, wait a minute. Where he go? Afro pops this man's eyes out and shoves the thing in his eye sockets. Oh my goodness. But nah, what's even more crazy, this damn Afro bot came back. So then they start having the fight of the century. This hole goes up to Kingdom Come. And then they just start fighting while falling through the clouds. Okay. But then Afro got a good stab on him and the robot was like, oh shit, danger, danger. And Afro just slams the robot back into the palace. And then the sword comes down right into its head and the robot ends up blowing a load. Pause, but... <laughs> Literally. Whoa, what? Said, that felt good. So after Afro cooked the entire league of peanut heads and spun back for his shawty, he ends up running up on a man with a teddy bear on his head. And he's like, I've been waiting a long time for this, Afro Samurai. This nigga is breathing and sounding like Darth Vader. This man, Samuel L. Jackson, must have loved that role as Mace Windu because this entire fight <laughs> was a Star Wars reference. But was it actually? Afro does not draw if so, that's sword, actually kind of sweet. just starts sweet. running away. And then he started getting cooked a little bit. So teddy bear Darth Vader's like, How dare you mock me, nigga? I mean, you're already one with the dark side, are you not? Hey, nigga, that's kind of racist. Quiet, you ignorant imbecile. I'm just speaking the facts. I and thought he was imaginary. He slams him through this entire building. Can he so see he Afro's imaginary teddy friend? Teddy bear mask. And this is his other childhood friend, Gino. So now we end up moving to what our up second going flashback. With this, uh, and how childhood this man Afro actually got the number two headband. So do you remember his master that took him in and raised him and trained him in sword fighting? Yeah, uh, Brody had the number two headband the whole time. But this man Afro said, I do not care if you are my master. I need that musty ass headband, nigga. And he's like, do you dare fight me, boy? I raised you. I was the father that stepped up. But all these bandits end up running up on them and all they students, because everybody wants that number two headband. But it was a literal bloodbath. All of Afro's friends just started dying. Gino got his back blown out. Bruh. And then after this, his master turns around and he's like, Afro, do you want this fade? And of course, Afro was like, <laughs> yeah. So Afro <laughs> just straight him off his master. Bro said, you are not my dad. So that man, Gino got you up. You are and not like, my dad. Afro, what have you done? You're my brother, Afro. I mean, even though you're already on the dark side. You was about to destroy the Sith, not join them. My bad, cuz. And that man, Gino. Fell off a cliff. And he survived. That day, Ninja Ninja was born to help Afro cope. And Gino was found by the League of Peanut Heads and turned in to Darth Teddy Bear. So after Afro sheds Ninja Ninja from his conscience because bro was like, I gotta tap in. Afro finally I'm gonna go into the sage mode? Really What's that? Story. But this man Afro said enough of this bullshit and hits this man with a critical hit. Mm. That man really hit him with the, even though you was my brother, you could still get cooked. I mean, Rest if you stepping up, so, so it's fair game. After all the long years in the rampage this man has gone on, Afro is now about to slide for his pops. This man, Justice, aka Freddy Krueger, just sitting here looking malnourished as fuck, looking like a dried sponge, starts saying, <laughs> about damn time, little nigga. In all honesty, I was getting bored. 
But it looks like your black ass has finally came to spin for your pappy. So Freddy jump up and shoot him and told him, get ready to join your daddy, nigga. So this man just started blasting, bro. This nigga has a infinite mag. He hasn't reloaded once. And damn. Apple got in close and cut off his arms. But this man, Freddy said, you've fallen into my trap, dumbass. And it is finally revealed how this man killed Afro's dad. Bro has a third arm in his back. But uh... Afro Slits bro's throat, and that nigga's head is hanging on for dear life. But obviously, uh, it's not that easy to kill Freddy. Of course bro not. Re attaches his head and earth bends this nigga to heaven. So bro thinks Bruh. he stabbed him through the head, but bro's aim That's is the garbage. afro. He stabbed him through the afro. So <laughs> afro comes down and shits kebabs this nigga. Fatality. Nah, he's slicing and that dice. Man, afro finally became the coldest nigga in the land for now oh my god that was all a righty ladies and gentlemen jesus now, detailed, that was a long ass exhibit <laughs> to be honest with you that's the only shit bro needed but oh my B god bro bonus. i mean come on who doesn't want a little bonus exhibit from yours truly so after you know the whole main story happens there's a movie after this where some bad bitch comes and tries to fuck up this whole oh. nigga's life and she is also another one of afro's childhood friends. oh my what god bro childhood friends trying to kill him so i'm saying the number one headband from him and ends up resurrecting this man's dad but what we are gonna be focusing huh? on is actually none of that there is a certain fight in this movie that will dead ass make you question your morals and you will realize even though this man afro was the protagonist this man is no damn hero so since afro lost the number one headband afro had to go and search for the number two again so later on while he's on his journey he runs into some motherfucker looking like he just got off the set of pocahontas kidnapping some kid but hey obviously yo bro started shitting bricks when he realized oh shit nigga that's afro so bro tried to shoot him with his shorty but that man got cooked in like 0 0.5 seconds of bro course. got his face sliced off so then this man's dad comes and he's like hey bro i appreciate you saving my kid and everything dude judging by your appearance are you here for rolling loud bra what <laughs> you got to be come on bro let's go get some drinks before the concert and this man was not lying while afro was getting drinks hey, with yo. this man these motherfuckers is dead ass having a music festival They're okay gonna do right here bro like yo 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 know what the fuck going on it's your boy dj noodle barnacle in this motherfucker not a noodle barnacle <laughs> Okay. So while everybody's outside, yeah, that's like, kind of tough. Rolling loud with DJ Noodle Barnacle. Afro's in here with a mystery man. So bro's like, cheers, bro. Is that Let's actually his name, Noodle Barnacle? If so that's crazy. So while they continue to talk, the man says, "You know, dude, he's not even my real kid, man. You see, his father died." to a nigga with an afro so yeah uh this is a number two headband holder shichiguro oh but boy see, here's the thing bro actually has good intentions because he wants to hide the number two headband to stop the bloodshed but this man afro did not care at all bro will stop at nothing to get that musty ass headband so they go outside and they're about to duel so she took like, it outside you know, bro i really That's thought we could have been good friends bro but your vengeance blinds you bro not cool so they start to scrap and it looks like these dudes are just dead even so afro tries to land a strike but bro stops it with chains on his forearm and mm. he just got this big ass chain hanging bro got okay. all this ice this nigga karapika all bro <laughs> missing is a shovel so he just started whipping that hoe had afro on his head there will never and i mean never be a moment in all of anime history that will be as cold as Karapika bringing a shovel to a fight. I don't care. Like, that is just... Oh, that, that's just different. That's just too cold. Heels. So Afro said, the hell with this. Let's have a change of scenery. So they run out to the festival and start fighting in front of everybody. Not the Even festival. fighting in the damn floor. So why are they fighting a bad shot? He's out here watching from a distance. So she calls up DJ Noodle Barnacle and tells him, Play my shit, baby. 
So bro pulls out his mixtape. Nigga said, I'm about to go platinum with this. And they end up getting jumped by the damn Yo. plan. I guess this man Shredder said, y'all best get ready for my trial. So this <laughs> man Afro had to deal with these middle of the boss. Is he actually going to join the round table? I would love that. The entire foot clan. Teacher girl's like, let's go ahead, finish this off, brah. Mono way mono, bro. So they started scrapping <laughs> again, and they are still dead even. But this man Afro pulled out one of the dirtiest tricks I have ever seen. DJ Noodle Barnacle drops from the float. Afro grabs him and pushes him to Shichiguro, uses him as a body shield, and stabs Shichiguro through the DJ. Hey, Bro. yo. Ain't no way this nigga just used DJ Noodle Barnacle as a body hey, shield. Hey, yo. And ended up killing Shichiguro and taking that number two headband. Oh, my right God. In front of of his, his son. son. This man Afro oh my God, bro. This little kid's father figures. <laughs> and before he left, he had to say a prayer for that pack. God is good. God is great. Let us thank him for this pack. Amen. Oh my God, that's ugly crazy. Ass man with this terrible ass haircut to grieve over his dead father. After Again. Father, you want to know what Afro did? <laughs> but no. It actually gets crazier from here. <clears throat> so after this man basically killed his Frankenstein ass father and got the number one headband back, the little boy ended up following him. And Afro Don't tell me you cut down the and boy. Hands him the number two headband and tells him, come get it back in blood. He did this kid the exact same way Justice did him all those years oh ago my and the God, of bitch bro. continues no 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 bro that's, that's niggas crazy they well, uh that's a dark way to end off a video well at least it can't possibly get worse than this a little longer than a few minutes later oh great um, the manga at the end kotara face off with apple oh i'm a fucking puke i'm fucking sick hold up let me read that again. Later. In the manga at the end, Kotaro faces Afro, but he is killed by him through decapitation. <laughs> oh my god. In the manga at the end, Kotaro faces Afro, Afro but he Oh, I'm a fucking puke. I'm fucking sick. <laughs> Oh my god, yo, Afro is different. <laughs> that dude is different. All right, I can definitely see why he is called the coldest samurai because that. <laughs> oh my god, I, I'm actually glad that I didn't watch this growing up, like, because I remember it being on Adult Swim and. I, it just never really interested me. I don't know why, but I'm glad I didn't watch it because I feel like if I did, watching this video all these years later wouldn't have had as much of an impact on me as, as it has. Because, like, going into this blind, I'm like, who is this dude? And then learning about him here, I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> like, this dude is a menace. And he's supposed to be the protagonist? Like, he, he is a freaking menace. But, yo, he definitely deserves to be on the table for sure. Uh, yeah, another great CJ video. His voice acting is, like, always improving. He's always being funny. I enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed my reaction to it. And if you did, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I would really appreciate that. And I will leave the link to the original video if you want to check that out in the description. But for now, I will catch you guys in the next video. See ya.